you guys are not going to believe what happened today so far. So I was actually in town this afternoon and a good buddy of mine texted me a picture of a giant, giant, giant old deadhead that he had found this afternoon. He just happened to be walking up in the bush. Um, and as soon as he had sent me the picture, I looked at it and then I was like, wait a minute. And so then I asked him, you know, where did he find this deer and all of that details. And the reason was is because immediately I had recognized him and you're not going to believe it, but it is the spring of 2021 and Guy just found a deer that Darcy shot and lost on November 23rd of 2012. Eight and a half years later. Let me just start off by saying that this is a story about a deer that I thought we would never tell. You might recognize a bit of footage of him from our earlier seasons as he made a few appearances in our intros and the odd episode, but the truth about this hunt was never told for the simple reason that we had never found him. It was a hunt forever burned into our memories, but for the wrong reasons. What started out as a surprise encounter with the single largest deer we've ever laid eyes on in the bush ended in heartbreak and defeat. Lessons were learned and we grew a lot that day. As young hunters trying to figure out things as we went, this was a bad case of learning a horrible lesson on the kind of animal that most hunters spend their entire life searching for and never finding. And finally, after almost exactly 10 years from that horrible day, we can finally share the story of the largest typical whitetail that we will likely ever encounter in our entire lives. In the fall of 2012, we had just began filming for our first season of Fatal Impact and spent the entire year gathering as much footage as possible. I was only 19 years old and Darcy was only 18. We had both recently graduated high school in the past two years and I was desperately trying to figure out how to turn a dream into reality. With one of our most successful fall hunting seasons ever already in the bag from September and October, we felt like heroes heading into November. But hunting whitetail was our greatest challenge to date as we'd only just began trying to figure out the bush and honestly didn't have any idea what we were doing. We spent a couple of weeks hunting hard throughout the month with a few close encounters along the way. But when we climbed into the stand on the morning of November 23rd, neither of us knew what was about to happen that day. Late in the morning, I glanced up and spotted a buck cruising through the brush down below us. And I should have known that it was a sign from above because to this day, it is still the only mule deer buck I have ever laid eyes on in the bush. However, with the sun starting to lower in the sky later in the afternoon, I glanced up in front of me and caught movement headed our way. When I hit him with my binos, I immediately knew he was a shooter buck and got the camera on him. But as I watched him close the distance on the screen of the camera, the closer he got, the more I realized that he wasn't just a shooter buck. He was something special. Oh my god, Darcy. That is a giant buck. Okay. You hit him good. You hit him good. Oh my god. He is huge. Here, give me a high five. Yes. Oh my god. Unbelievable. 
I don't even know how big he is. Didn't even get a chance to look. I spotted that deer way out there. And I did not think he was gonna come. I was getting ready to hit him with a grunt call to try and get his attention, but he turned. I seen him, he was raking a tree over there. Was he? Oh my God. I didn't see him at first, but good thing I shot him when I did. Oh my God. I think he would have spotted us if we I didn't shoot him then. I was just waiting for you to shoot him. He jumped, you definitely hit him. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Covert Scouting Cameras, Vortex Optics, Old Smokes Coffee, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. It wasn't until I turned the camera off that Darcy looked at me with concern in her eyes. Clearly, I didn't see it, but she knew that it didn't feel right. And after reviewing the footage on the camera, my heart sank when I saw where she actually hit him. In the heat of the moment, I just assumed that you couldn't miss at seven yards and that it was a slam dunk. But watching him run away, she expressed her concern for the shot placement. When I asked her why she hit him there, her answer will stick with me for the rest of my life. As a young hunter, she simply told me that she had only ever been taught to shoot them in the shoulder, so she put it on his shoulder and squeezed. And this was the lesson that I was referring to earlier. On the largest deer we will likely ever encounter, she made a poor shot not by accident, but simply because she didn't know any better. I couldn't be mad, but my heart was broken for her. We spent some time tracking him before deciding to come back in the morning. When we woke up, there was four inches of fresh snow on the ground. We spent days looking for him without so much as a trace. Over the next eight seasons, I would think about that deer every time I drove through that part of the bush, knowing that he was likely laying there somewhere. That winter, we lost close to 70% of our deer herd. So even if he managed to survive the shot, I knew that winter would take him. Eventually, we accepted the fact that we screwed up and he was gone. Until I received a text message from a good friend of mine eight and a half years later about a random deadhead he had found along a trail. When I opened that photo, my jaw dropped. So, the craziest thing happened today that I would have bet my life on would have never happened. Um, Nine years ago in November, I shot at a huge deer and I made a bad shot and he got away. I cried about that deer. I have always thought about that deer. I hate talking about it because it was just like a bad situation and it made me sick knowing that I had made a bad shot on that deer and we didn't find it. And then today I was on my lunch break and I got a text message from Dana. Um, our friend Guy was in the bush shed hunting and um he came across a deadhead sent the picture to dana not knowing anything like not even thinking that it was this deer dana sent it to me and immediately i was like is that my deer because it was it was my deer in the picture and sure enough Guy, nine years later came across the deer that i shot and i honestly can't believe it i can't believe it like i <laughs> I have been like shaking all afternoon at work. I feel like a little kid that's like three years old going to like the biggest party. I, I am like honestly so excited. I, I can't believe that this is actually happening. That I, I haven't even actually got to see it yet. Um, but Guy's gonna bring me to the deer here. They have just showed me the picture of it that he took earlier today. Um, so let's go. Did you find any other sheds today? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all besides that. <laughs> I didn't even think to ask you that. And last week we spent two days in BC, walked about 20 miles, never found nothing. Keep going. 
Head towards that spruce. Oh, dude. Oh my gosh. How is it in that good of shape? I need to put my hands on this thing. Look at this. That is unbelievable. Look, the back is even dark still. Like that's his natural horn. The brow tines haven't even been touched. Like only, how? Only one piece chewed off. Yeah, one, just the, the front here. But there's quite look, a bit. There's quite a bit chewed off here. Yep. But, but I mean, after over, nine if years. You look over here. Actually, <laughs> See? are you serious? Yeah. What? I also found the tip of it. Oh my gosh. And that's the chewed off tip. <laughs> Jeez, you didn't tell me about that part. <laughs> it's almost complete. Oh my gosh. Like, what? Are, can I hug you? <laughs> Come here, I need to hug you. No, the cameraman might not like it. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're very welcome. I can't, I can't believe this. I remember Dana telling like, me the story about that deer and as soon as I sent him this, the pictures, he knew right away it was the deer. He said, wait, wait, wait a minute, he said. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent me a picture of it. And as soon as I saw the picture, I remembered back in the days when Dana told me the story about that deer seeing that picture. And I said, yeah, there's no denying it. And we started comparing all the little bumps and... Like it's 100% it's him, yeah. Oh, because yes. Because we, yes. oh, yeah. we have all kinds of, we have trail camera pictures of him from that year. We have all kinds of video because that was nine years ago. I had way less deer hunting experience than I do now. And me, I was taking my sweet old time trying to get out of my heater body suit when it was freezing cold out. And I did not act quick enough. And that's part of the reason why I'll admit I didn't shoot him when I probably should have. Um, but I mean, that's just the way it goes. I learned from it. It was a lesson, I guess, but like, I can't believe that I have my hands on this deer. This is unbelievable. Like, all his stickers, like, you can see in the video, all these little stickers on his main beams, on his, like, this is crazy. What had happened was, um, we shot him. I don't remember what time it was, but it was for sure in the afternoon. I think it was pretty late in the afternoon. November 23rd at 3.30 p.m. I'll never forget okay, that time. Okay, okay. Dana must have looked back at the footage from... No, no, I've remembered that ever <laughs> okay. since the day it happened. <laughs> okay. And anyways, we had, we, we tried to track him like right away. Um, we, well, we left him for a bit and we had found a spot where he had bedded down and then we realized that we had bumped him and because of the bad shot, we decided to leave him and we were going to come back the next day. But then of course, it being November, it snowed a ton that night. And so there was no blood, like all the fresh deer tracks were all filled in with snow and it was just a disaster. And we did what we could. Um, Dana went back and like grid searched for forever trying to find him. We never did. And then we like kind of pinpointed it on the map from where Guy found him here to where I shot him. And it's, what did you say it was? Like 1.2 kilometers or so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he went quite a ways and like, I just can't believe that wolves, because there's so many wolves in this bush here, or just like the squirrels and porcupines and everything, like why, how, how is it, how is it still like this? Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Wood Wheaton Super Center, True Fire Releases, Victory Archery, Black Widow Innovations, Wapiti River Outdoors and Federal Premium Ammunition. This segment of the show is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. I got a lot of lessons left to learn. We immediately called our good friends at Top Notch Taxidermy Studio to see if they could bring it back to life for us and showcase the process involved with a delicate rebuild such as this. Alrighty, so we got uh, Darcy's whitetail here that they found in the bush nine years after she shot it, which is the way she goes sometimes in the hunting world, uh, unfortunately. So we got this uh, end of the main beam here that they found laying beside it in the bush. You can tell it fits really nicely right into there, so this is how it was. 
So that's going to have to be doweled with an all thread rod into this end and into that end. Um, and then that'll be put back into place as well. We got chewed tips here, 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 around the bases. Just about all the tips are chewed on a little bit by squirrels and whatnot. These ones here. There's going to be quite a bit of restoration in that um, just to get it back to how it was. Because if we go to color it like that, you're going to see all that. So we need to get it looking like it was when it was alive. And then after that, it's going to be base colored with a big, like an ivory color, the whole thing coated. And then we'll be seal all that color in. And then we'll have to be putting in browns and oranges and the colors of the natural antlers over top. And that's a big process in itself. But we should be able to get it back looking like it was. So I put my hesitations on the show Cause this is what I choose This will be the easiest thing if I let it And I can't be too afraid to fall So I'm leaving everything on the chain Alrighty, so what we did here overnight was this was all just uh, doweled in with that metal and the auto body filler in there and we put sculpt all over top here today and then we textured it with this texture mold just so that it's not perfectly smooth because when you go to paint it if it's too smooth you'll notice that difference in finish compared to the rough antler here. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps, Scree Gear, High Mountain Seasonings, Block Targets, Eye Hunter, Glendale Targets, and Deluxe Wall Tents. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Tourism Saskatchewan. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. We're finally here at Top Notch Taxidermy pick up my deer and we have waited I guess it's been almost 10 years for this, eh? Almost 10 years. I never thought we'd ever be picking up this deer from the taxidermist, but here we are. Let's go take a look. Wow. Yeah, that's him. What a great job. Jeez, what a deer. Even the little spruce sap on the horns here. You can't even tell. This was the spot here that it was broken off. You can't even tell. Seeing this deer for the first time in all his glory is a sight that I will remember for the rest of my life. We can't thank Top Notch Taxidermy Studio enough for the incredible work that they put into rebuilding this deer from the ground up. The truth is, the heartbreak and disappointment from that day in the stand weighed heavy on our hearts and the memory of that hunt was never focused around the glory and beauty of the deer himself. We knew he was beautiful on that cold November afternoon, but seeing him brought back to life just like he was on that special day in the stand is something that's hard to express appreciation for. Their work put the finishing touches on one of the craziest stories I've ever been a part of in my hunting career. One that starts with immense heartbreak and finishes with one of the most spectacular deer shot anywhere in the world that season. With a gross typical score in the mid-190s, 
he will forever hold the crown of the most beautiful deer in our house, and certainly the one with the craziest story to tell.